this is the three minutes or less TikTok style version of chapter 10, but don't get me wrong, the art of meta commentary. So what is meta commentary anyways? Um, basically you do this all the time. You, it's when you explain something that you said or you wrote. And I know that now that, uh, that Facebook is meta, we're going to be talking a lot more about those types of things. So meta commentary is a way of commenting on your claims and telling, um, others how to and how not to think about your claims or what you wrote. So think about meta commentary like a Greek chorus or a voiceover narration that's guiding the reader. Um, it's like a second text next to your first one, really explaining to the readers um, how to understand your views. Uh, there's a really great uh, little cartoon there on chapter 10 that says, all writing is conversation. And then the next person saying, oh no, don't get me wrong. Uh, what I'm really saying, right? And the main text is saying something. The meta text uh, tells readers how and how not to think about it, okay? So you're gonna use your meta commentary to clarify and elaborate. So you might be thinking, but why, right? Can't you just say it clearly the first time? If only, right? If only we could do that. Even the very best writer, writers can provoke reactions in readers that they didn't really intend on doing. Um, so they need you to guide them. So even the best readers can get lost and fail to see connections. Why else? Meta commentary will help you develop your ideas and generate more text. So students come to me all the time. I don't know how to write more. Meta commentary will help you. Start writing about your writing. Start commenting, adding comments, and your paper will be the best, the clearest, most readable text it can be. When you think you're done writing, explain even more. And the textbook has a lot of great templates to help you with this. Uh, on page 141 is a good place to start. Uh, so even when you think you've said everything possible in an argument, try inserting the following types of meta commentary. So here, you can go ahead and look. Um, in other words, she doesn't realize how right she is. Right? Or you could say something like, what so-and-so really means is, or my point is not this, but really this. Ultimately, my goal is to demonstrate that whatever it is that you want to say. Those are really great ways to add on to your text. Um, I just want to really quickly go over what was in the textbook here because it's a really good um, meta commentary, good example of it from Neil Postman, who is a cultural critic. Um, and you can see how he's talking about the shift in American culture from print and reading to television and movies. So I'm going to go ahead and read this. It is my intention in this book to show that a great shift has taken place in America with the result that the context content of much of our, our public discourse has become dangerous nonsense. With this in view, my task in the chapters ahead is straightforward. I must first demonstrate how under the governance of the printing press, discourse in America was different from what it is now, generally coherent, serious, and rational. And then, how under the governance of television, it has become shriveled and absurd. But to avoid the possibility that my analysis will be interpreted as standard brand academic whimpering, a kind of elitist complaint against junk television, I might first explain that I appre appreciate junk as much as the next fellow, and I, full, I know full well that the printing press has generated enough of, of junk generated enough junk to fill the Grand Canyon to overflowing. Television is not old enough to have matched printing's output of junk. So this is Neil Postman amusing ourselves to death public discourse in the age of show business. And I'm going to go ahead and read what it said in the text here. It says, to see what we mean by meta commentary, the look at the phrases above that we have italicized. With these moves, Postman essentially stands apart from his main ideas to help readers follow and understand what he's arguing. He previews what he'll argue. He says, it is my intention in this book to show. Then he spells out how he will make his argument. With this in view, my task in the chapters ahead is... I must first demonstrate, and then um, he distinguishes his argument from others' arguments um, it may be easily confused with. He says, but to avoid the possibility that my analysis will be interpreted as, right, elitist or, um, I must first explain that. And so you can see that he really works with you and guides the reader as, you, he, as he's going, right? Um, another thing that can be meta commentary is something like titles. It can add an additional subtext when the writing uh, to the writing even before you begin. So, for example, um, James Joyce wrote a portrait of an artist instead, or of the artist instead of saying the portrait 
of the artist, right? He wasn't saying it was the only one. He was saying it's a, right? Just a portrait. So there's a meta commentary even there in that title. Uh, many of the things that you already learned in this book are also meta commentary. So for example, answering questions like, so what? Who cares? Entertaining objections and adding transitions. All of those things are part of this meta commentary. Um, so go ahead and check out the great templates that will help you employ this skill on pages 144 to 146 and keep being meta.